Hello everyone, this is Gary from the Seer's Cave and today we have part three of my series on the way that I use the pendulum and this is really something that I'm looking at today as a response to my good friend Glammy Witch who has been working with her pendulum recently and was looking at the sort of specific energies that her pendulum shows her and it got me thinking so I'm doing this video now which as I say is part three and I will also be covering a part four where I will be looking at crystal energies with the pendulum but in this segment what I'm going to be looking at is divine energies, god and goddess energies, and how they can show up in the pendulum. Now, as I've mentioned before, a lot of what you'll do with a pendulum is down to having it pre-programmed so that you understand the responses that you're getting. And I'm going to use my beautiful new brass Karnak Egyptian pendulum to illustrate the the kinds of energies I've taken a little time beforehand to program some new information into the pendulum so that it understands what I'm asking it and I've tried to program things that may be relevant to the specific deity and also things that may be relevant in the sense of when you're working with divine energy, the purpose behind that work, why that particular deity might be coming to you. Because obviously each deity within a polytheistic pantheon has specific attributes and associations, just like people have different characteristics. So do the gods and the goddesses. So. I'm just going to show you some of the things that I've programmed. The first thing that I programmed it to do was to show me, and you can see I'm keeping it still there, was to show me how it moves for a masculine energy. And as I mentioned the word, off the pendulum goes. And at the moment it's just rotating clockwise, if you can see that, and quite small circles to indicate a male energy. Now as I change my thought to female energy, feminine energy, you can see instantly the pendulum rotated round the opposite way. It stopped briefly, if I do the same trick again, or technique even, now we're going back to the masculine energy. So it has a couple of swings where it stops, and I'm just going to get it to stay still. Has a couple of swings where it stops, and then it goes off in the opposite direction. Now at this point, I'm going to get it, as we have got an idea at this stage, whether we're dealing with a male or female energy, which is not so much so significant with dealing with uh, deities because obviously they have that energy fairly clearly defined but certainly when you're dealing with crystals or anything where you you have to intuit whether you're dealing with a more masculine or more feminine side that can be quite useful now characteristics and things that you are intended to learn let us have a look this next one I'm going to show you is how the pendulum reacts for the characteristic of patience which let's be honest is something most of us could do with learning I know I certainly could and as you can see in this case I've got it going from left to right sideways that is the programmed direction for patience now patience has a flip side which is action and as soon as I mention that word, the intent is in my mind as well. We now have the pendulum going in a diagonal from my bottom left 
to top right. Then I think of, well, what is, the, what is an, another alternative to action? Is acceptance. And as you can see, what we have is the pendulum immediately switches to the opposite diagonal. So now we are going from bottom right to top left. We can also ask the pendulum to show us a direction for determination. And as you can see, now it changed again, and now it is going straight up and down. And I programmed two other responses. One is to show us passionate energy. This is again associated to the masculine, strong, passionate energy, strength, and fire. And that, as you can see, that's quite different to what it showed us for a purely masculine energy. Here we have much, much larger swings. And now, as I start to think, we have the opposite of that, which is the receptive, gentle, feminine. So this is more of a kind of getting in touch with your female side kind of energy. It's still a very strong energy. More so than the purely, in a sense, identify what sex we are dealing with. Much, much stronger energy. So those are the programmed responses that I have for my pendulum. At this stage, something that really interested me in Glammy Witch's video, which if you haven't seen it, should definitely check it out, was the idea that the pendulum would react in different ways depending on the god or goddess image that it was used in conjunction with. So what I've done is I've divided some of my oracle decks up into three piles. The central pile are actually rune cards, but they do show three of my favorite gods from the Norse pantheon. So I may well do those first. And the first one we have is the god Heimdall. Now, I'm not looking so much at the runic meaning here, I'm looking more at the actual god himself and his purpose, his intention. Now Heimdall was the guardian of the Bifrost Bridge and he was tasked with never uh, losing that guardianship. He was tasked to remain vigilant at all times so that he could warn of the approach of the the negative forces that were going to cause the beginning of Ragnarok. So he could blow on his horn and warn the gods that the invasion was coming. That was his purpose. So what I'm going to do is ask the pendulum to show me what connection Heimdall may hold. Now we've got, again, you can see immediately it's identifying his gender. We have that gentle uh, swing. This is not the huge passionate swing that we saw. This is simply a gentle, it's not even leaving the borders of the card. I'm then going to ask for some qualities. And the first one it shows is patience. Because obviously Heimdall has a long time to wait. And... You know, he really, basically, he's there for a very, very long time. I'm going to ask for a second quality, and we have determination. So, it is a job that takes a lot of patience, a lot of determination. It's a real kind of waiting position. So, the pendulum is showing that in relation to this god specifically. So, there's a few of these to get through, so I'm going to buzz through a few of them. Now, the next god that we have from this particular deck is the god Frey. And Frey is a very, very strong and virile Norse god of fertility, of harvest, and of all things relating to growth and 
the sort of masculine energy or the sexual energy in a sense so you could probably imagine what we might see here but let's ask so we start off with the pendulum still and we ask it to show us and the first thing we get is that it identifies male that's the first thing it shows then we ask for a quality and look how the pendulum suddenly takes off and it really is taking off quite dramatically here we have this huge swing which is showing that passionate and strong energy and I'm going to ask it for another quality here and in this case what we have is action we have the sort of decisiveness direction that we had if you remember we had patience we had action we had determination and we had acceptance this has gone to action so those are characteristics that it is ascribing to this particular deity and if you're looking to work with a particular deity you can even ask the pendulum a kind of a yes or a no is this deity a deity that I am connected to in some way that is obviously something you can also do through working through meditation now if we look at the next card we have the god Baldur who actually is one of my patron deities and what we have here if we go with the pendulum again and I just ask in my mind and off it goes now again we have this masculine energy here and what I'm gonna ask for now is another characteristic and look where it's going this characteristic is now receptive Baldur is a god that is associated with prophecy and with divination so a receptive energy is not that much of a surprise and I'm going to ask for one last characteristic and isn't that interesting what we have here is the female energy this is the gentle nurturing feminine energy and it's very very strong again as you can see the sheer magnitude of that swing now there may be some of you thinking that to have a female energy ascribed to a male deity is disrespectful I don't personally believe so because at the end of the day why would the gods be any different from humans in so much that you know we are in their image and there are human beings who are very very butch if you like be they male or female they're very very strong very passionate very fiery very alpha in their personas and equally there are human beings both female and male who are very gentle very quiet very receptive very omega in a sense very yin rather than the yang they are very very gentle souls there's no reason why the gods wouldn't be the same and Balder has always shown himself to me as a gentle nurturing deity so that doesn't surprise me in the least now I'm going to move on to some goddess cards here and I have a mixture so the first one that I'm going to go with that I have actually included some cards that and some images that Glammy Witch herself mentioned and also that other uh, bloggers and other YouTube uh, video makers have used this is Hecate and this is a beautiful image of the goddess as you can see in not so much as having three heads but having three phases like the moon you have the maid mother and crone depicted within this card so 
let us have a look at the energy that is shown here. Again, the pendulum is still. And what we have is that gentle movement in anti-clockwise direction showing female. I'm now going to ask for a characteristic. And the characteristic I get here is one of action. So this is a very, very uh, strong, forward-moving deity. A deity who is direct. And those who work with Hecate, I'm sure, would, would confirm that that is how she, that is how she responds. I'm going to ask for another characteristic and see what it... This is interesting to see what comes up. What we have here is patience. So it may well be in this instance that were I to be in a position of learning from Hecate, then the two things that she would be teaching me are to act but also to be patient. It's almost like knowing when to act and when not to act. So I move to the next one. And we have an absolutely gorgeous card. This is absolutely one of my favorites in. This is the Mythic Oracle. And this is one of my absolute favorites. This is Selene. And this is the Goddess of the Moon. So this will be very interesting. You do tend to find that as you look at these images, your own higher self will give you a little sneak preview moments before you actually use the pendulum. But let us see. What we have here is that feminine energy again. Anticlockwise. I'm going to ask for a characteristic. And what I have here is acceptance. This is receptivity. So this is the lesson from Cellini being one of accepting and receiving. And now I'm going to ask for a second quality and we have a very, very large, very powerful anti-clockwise rotation, which is nurturing, feminine, intuiting. So we have an energy there. Now, a change of deck again. We have now the Goddesses and Sirens deck. And I'm using these decks purely as a focal point for my intention, for my energy. Now we have Quan Yin, another goddess that came up. Now, an interesting thing is, and I didn't even look at these in the previous cards, but there is actually a watchword associated with each of the oracle cards, which is like a characteristic of that deity. And I'm just looking at these off camera now, and Hecate comes up as crossroads. So that is the kind of choosing that decision when to act, when not to act. Selene comes up as intuition. So that's very interesting. That's something I didn't even look at is actually confirming what the pendulum is saying. Again, I'm not looking at the, de the definition here for Quan Yin. I'm simply concentrating on her. So let us begin with, obviously we have a female deity here and what we are looking at now is we want another characteristic and interestingly with Quan Yin determination comes up now I have to say Quan Yin is not a, a a deity that I've worked with before but I am aware of her her legend which is that she she attained enlightenment and she went up to heaven and at the gates, literally at the gates of heaven, when she was about to be admitted, she was, uh, she heard cries on earth. At that very point, she turned round, she said, no, I'm not going to enter heaven now. I'm going to return to earth, and I'm going to help people. 
and when then nobody else needs my help that is when I will ascend and you can see what we have is that again that female compassionate intuitive energy and once lo and behold if we now look at the catch word we have compassion the next one we move to this is Freya and Freya is the twin of the god Frey who we had earlier on this is his sister now she is the leader of the Valkyries and she is a goddess associated with the feminine aspects of fertility so we are dealing with a female goddess now let us take a look at her characteristics and the first one we have is action so here we are dealing with a very determined very fiery very feisty goddess and let us look for another characteristic of Freya interesting we almost have a reversal of what we had with Balder. In fact, we do have a reversal of what we had with Balder. Now we have a masculine, strong, passionate, forceful energy embodied in a female deity, in a goddess. And if we look at the wording at the bottom of this card, irresistibility. The force that cannot be resisted that would certainly seem to suit our next one one of my personal favorites and I do have some statues of this particular goddess this is the goddess Bast and again if we take a look at what we have here we're dealing with a goddess a female now then let us take a look at some of her characteristics. And we have patience shows itself, which is kind of interesting. Now we look for a second characteristic. And what we have here is the nurturing. Just one moment while I change this music. We have nurturing energy coming through. And the sort of suggestion here is very much one of being patient, everything having its time, everything being when it's supposed to be, and looking after yourself. And interestingly, the word that comes up is play. Now, play can have a suggestion of there is a time to work and there is a time to play. So, knowing when to do each. And also, play can be quite a nurturing thing. It can be something that enriches us and regenerates us. Now, moving to the next one. We have Isis. This is another goddess who does appear quite a bit. Uh, and many people seem to be very connected to the goddess Isis. So let us look. We have the female energy to begin with. We know we're dealing with a goddess here. So let us take a look at the characteristics that she shows. And immediately we get determination. And if you know the story of Isis, you know that she was the sister and the wife of the god of Cyrus. And she, her husband was killed by his brother, Set. And Isis, being a goddess of magic and sorcery, was it was able to actually put her husband back together again in a sense and that 
The determination comes in, however, in so much that his body was literally torn, torn limb from limb and scattered throughout the, the realm. Uh, I'm not entirely sure whether that was just within Egypt or the world over, actually, but scattered nonetheless. So the determination was in finding all the pieces and then putting him back together. Now, we look for another characteristic and we have, interestingly, we have action, which also works with that particular story. So there is a, a strength and a an indication of actually doing something here. There's a there's a sort of a doing energy here, an action energy. And we look at the card itself, and we have protection. So that in itself is protection is something that you do have to be proactive with. And our next one is Athena. Now, Athena, we've moved to a Greek goddess here, and a goddess associated, generally speaking, with victory in battle. She is a, a warrior. So let us take a look at what we have. Well, we have a female, for a start. We have a goddess. And again, this is a goddess I have actually had some connection to and dealings with. So let us take a look at her characteristics and what she demonstrates. And we have patience. Patience shows up. Yes, in battle sometimes you have to be patient. You have to know when and what to do. Let's look for another characteristic. And here we have passion. Masculine energy proactivity and a kind of strength which again doesn't surprise me for a warrior at all and the catch word that we have on her card is strategy so there is the patience strategizing knowing what to do and when we have two more and then I will break the video and there will be a part two, which I'm going to include some crystals in. So I'm going to do, that's the way I'm going to do it. Now we have Aphrodite. And obviously, Greek goddess of love. Based, so I understand, on an, an older uh, goddess, a Hittite goddess, I believe. And we have a goddess energy here. So, let us see what energy we get. Now, we've got a receptive energy very, very rapidly here. This is accepting, receiving, acknowledging. And one more characteristic we look for, what we have is that very, very strong feminine nurturing energy coming through. So let us take a look at the cut the catch word self love accepting oneself loving oneself and nurturing oneself and our final card before we go to part two Artemis a goddess associated with the moon and with the hunt let us take a look well we have a goddess as you can see so let us take a look. Oh, we have an action goddess again. Which again is not really surprising. Artemis, I believe, is also a god of the Amazons. A goddess, in fact, of the Amazons. So there is that strength and that determination and action quality within that uh, particular group of people. So let us look for another quality. And interestingly, here we have the intuitive, the feminine, the nurturing side. That presumably is the lunar association with Artemis. 
so as I say I'm going to break at this point and in part two I will be looking at the male deities that we still have yet to cover and also pulling out some crystals and showing you how different crystals can also be demonstrated and affected by the use of the pendulum. So, I hope you've enjoyed part one. Part two will follow shortly.